I'm going to go to Peter Tatchell, and then after that, we'll, uh, we'll open up to questions. Thank you. My starting point is that the modern movement of identity politics was very much a reaction to the failure of the left and progressive movement to deal with issues like women's rights, black rights, disabled rights, and LGBT rights. It was into that vacuum, into that neglect, that identity politics emerged. And so just to remind you, until the mid-1970s, much of the left, and probably most of the left, did not support LGBT rights. They said that homosexuality was a product of degenerate capitalism, that it was a bourgeois perversion, and that it would disappear under socialism. They also said that to fight for LGBT rights was a diversion from the main focus, which should be the class struggle and the struggle against imperialism. So when in 1973 I went to what was then Communist East Berlin to stage a gay rights protest against communist tyranny against LGBT people, I was denounced by much of the left as a right winger and an anti-communist and that I was in the company and pay of the CIA and MI5, the American and British intelligence services. But if we look back, we can see very clearly that identity politics has made huge positive gains. It has been the self-organization of women, black and ethnic minority communities, disabled people, and the LGBT community that has powered forward advances for those peoples. And it stands in stark contrast to the relative lack of success of the broader left. So I think identity politics has, on the whole, played a very positive contribution. But, and there is a big but, sometimes it is misused. Sometimes it is used as an excuse to evade human rights issues and abuses. Um, sometimes it does result in fragmentation, in the progressive movement becoming fragmented and different communities fighting their own corner without the recognition of their common humanity and indeed their common interests in working together. It goes against the whole principle that unity is strength that if we stand together and support each other, we are stronger and more likely to win. Um, taken to extreme, of course, identity politics leads to cultural relativism. The idea that all cultures are equally valuable, that all values are equally valuable, that there is no one better set of values than another. There are no universal values. There's no common value system for all of humanity. And that, of course, does lead to some very nasty places. I can remember some years ago, I spoke at an academic event where I was critiquing the way identity politics is sometimes misinterpreted and misused. And I said things like, freedom is better than slavery. Democracy is better than fascism. LGBT equality is better than homophobia. Rationalism, secularism, and humanism are better than religious obscurantism, ignorance, and intolerance. The upshot of that was that I was denounced by a whole section of the left for promoting Western supremacist values. <laughs> a complete betrayal of the millions of people in non-Western countries who share exactly the same values. So I support multiculturalism. I support identity politics, but with caveats. Certainly, diversity and inclusion are good positive values. The right to be different is a fundamental human right. You know, the idea that we should all be the same or conformist that is completely against humanitarian and human rights values. 
but the right to be different should only apply providing it does not involve the diminution of the rights and freedoms of others. So to give you an example of how identity politics and multiculturalism can be perverted, um, about two decades ago, with the LGBT group Outrage, I was involved in a campaign against eight Jamaican reggae singers who were advocating the murder of LGBT people. Acting in response to appeals from Jamaican LGBT and human rights defenders to challenge these musicians, we launched a campaign against them to try and get them to change their stance. When they wouldn't, we organized a global boycott campaign to cancel their concerts because we believed that incitement to murder is and was a criminal offense and that incitement to murder is an abuse of free speech. We were denounced by many on the left as promoting a racist campaign. And I am still attacked even to this day, two decades later, as that well-known racist, Peter Tatchell, who has produced a racist campaign against Jamaican people. Not even against Jamaican singers, not even against eight singers, but against the whole of Jamaican people. It just shows how badly wrong multiculturalism and identity politics can sometimes go. Um, I think that the principle of human rights as a universal principle is absolutely vital to defend the human rights of people everywhere and to unite us all in our common humanity, to work together to, yes, fight our own corner, but also fight our common corner to ensure the betterment of all of us. But of course, when you say this, some on the left will say, well, human rights, that's a Western concept. And I've been denounced many times for promoting the Western Eurocentric view of human rights as a universal principle. But of course, that is a total misreading of history and the truth. You can trace back some of the earliest embryonic ideas of human rights to Ashoka in ancient India and to Cyrus the Great in ancient Persia. Some of their ideas were the antecedents, the embryos of what we now know as human rights. And moreover, the great highlight of human rights principles, the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights, was not drawn up by Westerners, it was drawn up by people from all continents and cultures. And I ask you and invite you to look at the particular contributions of the Egyptian and Indian delegates to input, what, what they inputted into the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Really important contributions. So universal human rights are what bind us together. Without asserting our common humanity, we cannot conquer our common problems. We cannot secure human rights and social justice for everyone on this planet. Thank you.